Uh, well, there was a book that came out. It's like very interesting because it's the first book I think that's important on ebook, The Great Stagnation. Has anybody read this book? It's, it was written by an economist, um, Tyler Cowen. Um, it came out last year, and it's it's basically about this. It's about um, so the idea is getting back to whether you want to call it an accumulation crisis uh, if you're a Marxist or the development of a leading sector if you're a developmental economist. Um, the idea is that. Um, in the long run, mature products tend to not have any profitability, right? So you have an initial flush of profitability for a new product like the cell phone, like the iPhone, and over time, it goes down. Over time, it becomes a commodity good, which all the profits are driven out of that product. It's called the, it's called the product life cycle. It's something that everyone agrees on. Um, so the only way you can overcome this, right? So if you read your Marx, right? If you read your Marx, you're a good student of Marx. I hope you are. Um, there's two ways the economy, so Marx's real idea was that in the long run, um, the reason why capitalism co co collapses is that the rate of profit falls to zero, right? It falls. Is the rate of profit falling? And this is what Robert Brenner is going to be talking about in a couple weeks, I assume. This is one of his things he likes to talk about. You know, so if that's the case, capitalism collapses of its own accord. You don't have to do anything, which is nice for us lazy, you know, Gen Xers. Um, now, on the other hand, if the rate of profit is constant or rising, capitalism is good to go. And the way that capitalism has maintained its profitability, maintained profitability over time, is the development of new technologies, new industries, where you can have that initial flush in the product life cycle. Okay, so this is the problem with not having new technologies, right? So you can either overcome it by conquering geographic, the geographic fix that Lenin or David Harvey have, right? Either imperial or just you know marketing, um, or you can have new technologies that allow for this, this cycle. And that's what allows you to overcome these accumulation crises. And so that's, that's what it's all about. So developing new kinds of technologies, new places to invest all this money that's been piling up. Google has hundreds of billions of dollars. Where does it put it? Where does it put it to make a dollar? It can't just buy government bonds. It can't just buy more and more companies. Where can it put that money to actually create a rate of return? You know, and this is why you have these huge monopolies able to invest in crazy things like Xerox machines and computers and you know, autonomous ve vehicles and things like that. And some of them pan out. So this is why technology is so important. This is the other 1% that we don't talk about. Um, the less than 1% of the federal budget that's devoted to science research. Now, I'm a historian. I have nothing I have no, uh, no skin in the game with that. But that's a huge problem, that 0.8% supports the NSF and the NIH. Whereas, and this basic research is essential for long-term economic growth. We don't know where it's going to pan out, but it's essential. That's a real, uh, does that answer your question, or? Yeah. Okay. Yeah, I mean, I don't know. I'm not a scientist. So, uh, you know, if I, if I were a good person, um, I would be a material scientist. I think that would actually help the world. But I'm a selfish person, so I'm a historian. Because it's more fun to talk about history than do science. Um, but yeah, basically, I, I'm indifferent. I'm indifferent. Um, I assume that there is science to invest in. But we have to promote that, which at this point we don't. It's harder and harder to get basic science grants. It has to all be very short-sighted in terms of market applicability. You know, and you, you talk to your science colleagues, it's very, they're very constrained in for what they can and cannot do in terms of their grants. Um, it's, a, it's a huge problem. And of course, our companies no longer make the profits that they do, except for very few. And so they have to focus on what's tomorrow, what's tomorrow. And so there's no money available for R&D. It's a tax issue. We've changed the tax policy to reduce it for R&D. But it's also an issue just of being held accountable to shareholders in this new uh, age of flexible accumulation.